The question everyone is asking, will this finally be the storm that delivers? Let's look at what the data actually shows. Model disagreement is significant right now. That is the first thing you need to know. When you see the GFS and European model this far apart five days out, it tells you something important about forecast confidence. The GFS has been painting an aggressive picture. Major snow potential for the East Coast. A classic nor'easter setup tracking up the I-95 corridor. Double-digit snowfall totals for some areas. It's been consistent with this solution for multiple runs. The European model says not so fast. It has showing a much weaker system. In some runs, the coastal storm barely develops at all. The nor'easters that appeared in earlier GFS runs have vanished in the Euro-S forecast. This matters because historically, when models disagree like this, the truth usually falls somewhere in between, but not always. Sometimes one model locks onto the correct solution early. The challenge is figuring out which one. Here is the meteorological reasoning we need to consider. Cold air is available. That is not in question. Arctic air has pushed into the northern plains. Colorado reported 17 degrees this morning with wind chills near 5. That air mass will continue spreading southward through the week. Week. By Thursday, it reaches the East Coast. Moisture is also available. The Gulf Coast has been experiencing warm, humid conditions. Mississippi saw severe weather earlier with tornado warnings. South Carolina has been dealing with rain. That subtropical moisture is sitting there, ready to be tapped by any developing system. The issue is timing and phasing. The northern jet stream brings the cold air. The southern jet stream brings the moisture. For a major coastal storm to develop, these two features need to phase together at exactly the right time and location. Right now, the models can agree on when and where that phasing occurs. The GFS thinks it happens Thursday into Friday, positioned perfectly for East Coast snow. The Euro thinks the phasing is weaker or mistimed, resulting in a lesser event. Let me walk you through the regions and what each faces, starting in the Appalachians. Western North Carolina, Eastern Tennessee, Southwestern Virginia. Snow is already falling in some locations this morning. Robbinsville reported snow. Johnson City seeing flurries. Lake Junaluska has snow coming down. This isn't the main event. This is a separate piece of energy moving through ahead of the larger pattern shift, but it's meaningful for the mountains. The Cumberland Plateau, that elevated region between the main Appalachian Ridge and the interior lowlands, should see accumulating snow by Wednesday into Thursday. Elevation matters here. Areas above 2,000 feet will see the best snow potential. Lower elevations might mix with rain initially before transitioning to snow as colder air filters in. Amounts of 3 to 6 inches are possible in favored locations. That s enough to impact travel and create beautiful winter scenery. Moving to the Ohio Valley and Tennessee Valley. Conditions right now are quiet. Missouri sitting at 39 degrees with calm weather. It's been a particularly uneventful winter so far for this region. Region. That extended mild spell ends this week. By Wednesday, the first push of cold air arrives, temperatures drop. Any precipitation that develops will have a better chance of falling as snow rather than rain. The question is how much precipitation actually occurs. If the system stays south and east, this area sees cold and clouds but limited snow. If the system tracks farther west, snow amounts increase. The Great Lakes region has a different setup entirely. Lake effect snow is the story here. Wisconsin experienced the transition this morning. Rain changed to snow across south-central portions of the state. That's the leading edge of colder air moving over the relatively warm lake waters. Michigan's Upper Peninsula will see multiple rounds of lake effect snow through the week. When you have Arctic air rushing over the lakes, you create instability. That instability generates snow bands. These bands are notoriously difficult to forecast precisely. They can produce six inches in one location and nothing five miles away. If you live in a known snow belt off Lake Superior or Lake Michigan, you know what this means. Keep the shovel handy. Watch radar closely. These bands can intensify quickly. Now the East Coast. This is where the biggest question marks exist. Maryland hasn't seen a major snowstorm in two years in some locations. Connecticut used to get significant nor'easters regularly back in the 90s. Those big, vertically stacked coastal lows Don T seem to develop with the same frequency anymore. The question is whether this week changes that pattern. The GFS solution would absolutely change it. We re-talking about a potentially significant winter storm impacting the I-95 corridor from Virginia through New England. 
the type of storm that closes schools, disrupts travel, and gets measured in double-digit inches. The European solution would be another disappointment, maybe some snow showers, maybe a brief period of moderate snow, but nothing that accumulates significantly or lasts long enough to be memorable. Which model is right? We don't know yet. And that is an honest answer. What we can say is that the pattern supports storm development. The ingredients are there. Cold air, check. Moisture, check. Favorable upper level dynamics with energy diving southward, then lifting northeastward check. These are the same ingredients that produced historic East Coast snowstorms in the past. The superstorm of March 1993 had this setup. The blizzard of 78 had this setup. UV lived through these events. You know what a major East Coast snowstorm looks like. The pattern we re-watching has similarities, but pattern similarity doesn't guarantee the same outcome. Small differences in timing or storm track create huge differences in who sees heavy snow versus who sees mainly rain or even stays dry. For the Southeast, this is a cold story more than a snow story. Florida has enjoyed perfect weather for the past 10 days. Clear skies, comfortable temperatures. That ends this week. Arctic air will push all the way to the Gulf Coast by Friday. If you are in Florida and Don T regularly experience cold weather, this will feel extreme. Temperatures could drop into the 30s, potentially upper 20s in some inland locations. That S freeze territory. Protect plants, bring pets inside, cover outdoor faucets. The Gulf Coast from Texas through Louisiana has been dealing with temperature whiplash, warm one day, cold the next, then warm again. People have been sick for weeks, sinus issues, migraines. The back and forth pattern creates health problems. The good news, if you can call it that, is this cold air mass will be sustained. The temperature you use stops for a while. Let me address what you should be thinking about for preparation. If you are in the mountains of the Carolinas, Tennessee, or Virginia, winter weather preparation is straightforward. You are getting snow midweek. Stock up on essentials today if you haven't already. Bread, milk, batteries, medications. Make sure you have heat sources that work if power goes out. Snow-covered trees and power lines Don T mix well. For the I-95 corridor, Don T commit to major decisions based on either extreme scenario yet. Yes, there is potential for significant snow Thursday into Friday, but there is also potential for very little. Check forecasts again Monday evening after the latest model runs. By Tuesday morning, the picture will be much clearer. If models converge on the stronger solution, you'll have two days to prepare. That has adequate time. If they converge on the weaker solution, you can relax. If they re-still divergent Tuesday morning, that itself is information. It means the forecast confidence remains low. Great Lakes residents know how to handle lake effect snow. The key is not trying to stay ahead of it while it's falling. Let the snow accumulation finish, then clear it. Multiple clearing sessions during an event just means multiple sessions of heavy work. Unless you absolutely have to get out, wait until the snow ends. For everyone facing the Arctic cold, take it seriously regardless of whether you see snow. Wind chills will be dangerous across the northern tier. Frostbite happens faster than you think when wind chills drop below zero. Exposed skin can freeze in 10 minutes or less under those conditions. Check on elderly neighbors. Make sure they have heat. Make sure they have food. Winter weather is particularly dangerous for older adults. They were less likely to feel temperature extremes accurately. They re more vulnerable to falls on ice. A simple check-in can prevent tragedy. If you re-traveling this week, stay flexible. Thursday and Friday are the days with the highest potential for travel disruption along the East Coast. If you can move travel to earlier in the week or push it to the weekend, that reduces risk. If you must travel Thursday or Friday, have a backup plan. One practical consideration, if snow does materialize for areas that Don T typically see it, remember that infrastructure matters more than snow depth. Three inches of snow in Atlanta creates more problems than 12 inches in Buffalo. Southern cities Don T have the plows, the salt stockpiles, or the experienced drivers. Don T underestimate a smaller snow amount if you are in an area unaccustomed to winter weather. The forecast models will continue updating every six hours. The 0Z run tonight, the 12Z run tomorrow morning. Each new run provides updated information. The trend in those runs matters as much as any individual solution. If the GFS continues showing the aggressive solution while the euro weakens further, that divergence tells us something. If the models start converging toward a middle ground, that increases confidence. If they flip-flop, that s chaos and it means the forecast is genuinely uncertain. On 
Ensemble data helps cut through some of this uncertainty. Instead of one model run, ensembles provide 30 or 50 different scenarios with slightly different starting conditions. The spread of those ensemble members tells you about confidence. Tight clustering means high confidence. Widespread means low confidence. Right now, the GFS ensemble shows about 25 members. Only a handful show major snow for mid-Atlantic locations. Most show something less significant. But the trend over the last day has been toward more members showing the stronger solution. That S worth noting. The pattern doesn't T end with this weak S potential storm. That S important to understand. The La Nina influence is reasserting itself after briefly weakening. La Nina winters typically favor more East Coast snow opportunities. We re not talking about every week, but the pattern remains favorable for additional chances through late January. If this weakest system underperforms, there's another potential system showing up in the extended range for next weekend. If this week S system overperforms, there could still be additional opportunities after that. The point is, this isn't a one-shot deal. Temperature-wise, expect significant cold regardless of snow. The northern plains and upper Midwest will see single digits to teens for highs by midweek. Wind chills well below zero. This is January Arctic air doing what January Arctic air does. The east coast will feel the cold Thursday and Friday. Highs struggling to reach freezing from Virginia through southern New England. Overnight lows in the teens for many areas. That S 20 to 30 degrees below normal for mid-January. The cold moderates slightly by next weekend, but we are not returning to mild conditions, just less extreme. Then early the following week, there are indications of another potential cold shot. The pattern is active. Winter is asserting itself after a relatively quiet start to the season. For the Western Mountains, I mentioned the disappointing forecast for mid to late January. If you're planning a ski trip from the 17th through the 27th, the pattern doesn't favor heavy mountain snow during that window. Systems are tracking wrong for the major ski resorts. That doesn't mean no snow. It means below normal snow. If you are going regardless, you'll still find skiing. But if you are hoping for fresh powder every day, this is in the window for it. Late January into early February looks better for western mountain snow based on current pattern trends. Back to the immediate forecast. The key days are Wednesday through Friday. Wednesday brings snow to the Appalachians. Thursday into Friday is when the coastal system potentially develops. Saturday, we assess the damage and deal with the cold. The National Weather Service will issue winter storm watches 24 to 48 hours before expected onset if confidence increases. Those watches get upgraded to warnings as the event gets closer and confidence grows. That's your official trigger for final preparations. I am not going to promise you a major snowstorm. The data doesn't support that level of confidence yet. What I will tell you is that the potential exists this. The ingredients are present. The pattern is favorable. Whether it comes together for your specific location is what we re-watching. Stay informed. Check back for updates. The forecast will evolve rapidly over the next two days. By Tuesday, we'll know much more. By Wednesday morning, we'll know if you need to clear your schedule for Thursday or if this was another case of potential that didn't materialize. Winter weather forecasting is humbling. You can have all the ingredients, all the right patterns, and still have the storm track 50 miles different than expected. That 50 miles determines who gets buried and who sees flurries. It's the nature of East Coast winter weather. What I can tell you with confidence is that cold air is coming, that S locked in. The snow potential is real but uncertain. The timing would be Thursday into Friday if it happens. The locations most at risk are the I-95 corridor and interior mid-Atlantic, Monitor forecasts from the National Weather Service. They have the final word on warnings and advisories. Make your preparations based on their official forecasts, not on any one model solution. That S where we stand. Potential is high. Confidence is moderate. Details are uncertain. Classic East Coast winter weather setup. 